This is the first in our series of lectures on section 2.3 in which we discuss extended set operations and indexed families of sets. In this video we're going to talk about how we can define unions and intersections of more than two sets. So for this purpose instead of calling my sets A and B I'm going to call them A1 and A2 in order to make it easier to generalize to more than two sets. So here's the working definition of the union of two sets A1 and A2. It's the set of all x in our universal set such that x is an element of A1 or x is an element of A2. A better way of saying the same thing is to say that it's the set of all x in our universal set such that there exists an index uh, i it's either 1 or 2, such that x is an element of a sub i. Also recall the definition of a1 intersect a2. It's the set of all x in our universal set, such that x is an element of a1 and x is an element of a2. But a better way of saying that is that it's the set of all x in our universal set, such that for every index i, either 1 or 2, x is an element of a sub i. So as I've said, this says exactly the same thing as this, and this says exactly the same thing as this. But the reason that it's these are better ways of saying it is that um, this way here and this way here is going to generalize to the situation where we have more sets. Now notice the only difference between the union and the intersection is the type of quantifier we use to describe the index. Now suppose instead we have three sets, A1, A2, and A3. We're going to use the above way of doing things in order to define union and, and intersection of these three sets. We define the union of the three sets, A1, A2, A3, to be the set of all x such that there exists an index i, either 1, 2, or 3, such that x is an element of a sub i. And we define the intersection of all three sets to be the set of all x, such that for every index i, from 1 to 3, x is an element of a sub i. So that's now your working definition of the union of three sets and the intersection of three sets. And you see the only difference in expressing it is the type of quantifier we use for the index. A very handy notation, instead of writing this, we just simply write it this way. That's the union of all three sets, A1, A2, and A3. And this is the notation for the intersection of all three sets. And um, this part of it is exactly the way I wrote it up here. So more generally, we can write the union of any finitely many sets. So if we give ourselves a natural number n and sets a1 up to a n, we can define the union of all of those sets analogous to the way we did it on the previous slide. It's the set of all x in our universal set such that there exists an index i from 1 to n such that x is an element of that particular a sub i. And the intersection of all of the sets is the set of all x in our universal set such that for every index i uh, from 1 to n, x is an element of a sub i. Notice that the, this union notation is preferable to writing this with dots in it, and this is preferable to writing this. Now the above generalizes uh, from finitely many sets to infinitely many sets. So suppose we give ourselves not just finitely many sets, but suppose we give ourselves denumerably many sets, which is to say there's an a sub i for every i um, in the natural numbers. We can then define their union intersection using exactly the same technique as before, same definition, 
Um, this is how we're going to denote it. And the working definition is, it's the set of all x such that there exists an index i in the set of natural numbers such that x is an element of a sub i. And the intersection of all of the sets is denoted in this way. And here's the working definition. It's the set of all x in our universe such that for every index i, in other words, for every i in the set of natural numbers, x is an element of that particular a sub i. Well, in fact, we, can, we don't even have to do it for denumerably many sets. We can do it for any collection of sets. So let me show you how we can extend this even farther. This brings us to the idea of an indexed family of sets. Let's say we have sets A1, A2, and A3. We'll take a step back before I show you the idea in its full generality. We take a set capital delta to be 1, 2, and 3. So those are the indices that label the three sets. And then these three sets taken as a set of sets can be written as it's the set of all a sub i such that i is an element of our indexing set 1, 2, and 3. That's a way of describing this family of sets. We refer to this collection of sets here as a family of sets indexed by the set delta. And by modifying our indexing set delta, we can describe other families of sets. So for example, say we have 100 different sets, A1 up to A100. We take our indexing set delta to be all of the integers from 1 to 100, and then this collection of sets can be written more briefly as the set of all a sub i such that i lies in this set delta. Or, let's say we have denumerably many sets, which is to say, for every natural number i, we have another set a sub i. So in that case, our indexing set is the set of natural numbers, and then this entire collection of sets can be represented in very simple notation, the set of all a sub i, such that i lies in the natural numbers. But we can go one step beyond that. We can have uncountably many sets in our family. Suppose for every single real number x, we associate some set that I'll call a sub x. So this x is the index that tells us which of the sets we're looking at. So now we take our indexing set delta to be the set of real numbers. And this notation here gives us a way of describing all of the sets as an indexed family of sets. So you see we've got for finite sets, for denumerably many sets, for uncountably many sets, we essentially can use the same notation to describe all of the sets in that family of sets. So now that we understand what we mean by an indexed family of sets, um, so let's give ourselves a generic indexed family of sets where this delta is the indexing set. Then it's very easy for us to write down what we mean by the union of all of the sets A um, in this family. The union is the set of all X in our universal set such that there exists an index i in our indexing set, such that x is an element of a sub i. And the intersection of all of the sets is the set of all x, such that for every i in our indexing set delta, x is an element of a sub i. So we're going to see in future lectures that uh, using these above working definitions, we can prove a great variety of results concerning unions and intersections of families of sets. And we'll find it to be fairly simple if we just stick to this basic, these two basic working definitions.